Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's finally solve the problem for sum. It's been a long time coming. We solved the original two sum problem. We also solved two sum two and then we solved three sum. I definitely recommend solving these two problems before you solve this one because this problem is pretty much exactly like the three sum problem with just a single extra for loop. But that way is kind of the naive way to approach this problem uh, because yes, this is literally just three sum with one extra value. And if you're not familiar with those problems, let's just kind of skim through this description. We're given an array of integers. We want to return all the unique quadruplets, so four values A, B, C, D, such that these values are at four separate indexes in the input array, and these four values summed together equal the target value, which is a parameter that we're given. So the threesome problem is pretty much exactly like this, except instead of four values, uh, we're required to find three values. So the first thing to understand is that we want unique quadruplets. We don't want duplicates. How do we eliminate duplicates? Because suppose we had, let's just look at a very simple example, uh, target eight, and we had five input values and all of them are two. So suppose, you know, we had a bunch of four loops, you know, we say, okay, this is the first value, this is the second, this is the third, this is the fourth, okay. These sum together equal eight. So we found one solution, right? Next, we might try something like this, right? Like literally the same exact values, which sum up to eight. Now, technically they are at different indexes. So does this count as a different quadruplet? Well, it does not because each quadruplet has to be unique. That's one of the requirements. So how do we eliminate that? Well, let's actually look at a slightly different example. And let's say, you know, we don't necessarily have four values, but we have some uh, amount of values that we're required to do. And just to make it simple, let's say we were looking for two values that sum up to some target and we want unique uh, results, right? So suppose we looked at the first value and then the second value, okay, two plus three, let's say this was the solution, right? So we'd say, okay, with this pointer, we're saying, okay, the first value in our pair of values is gonna be two. Then our next uh, pointer is gonna look at three, okay? So we found one solution. Next, our second pointer is gonna go here and then same three. So we found another solution. Nope, we don't want duplicates. So what we're gonna do uh, with the second pointer is increment it, but we're gonna keep incrementing it until it lands at a new value. If it's the same as the previous value, we don't wanna consider that uh, as a solution. So uh, the way to do this though, is to sort the input array so that all duplicates are next to each other. So you don't have to like keep track of uh, which ones that we've already seen before. You don't really need to use some kind of uh, data structure for that. By sorting the input array, uh, we can kind of detect those duplicates by themselves. And that's really the main thing about this problem to sort it and then not have duplicates. And once, uh, in this case, we have four values that we're looking for. And then, uh, you know, if we choose the first one, we'll be looking for three values. If we choose the uh, second one, we'll only be looking for two values. Once we get to the point where we're only looking for two values, it's basically boils down to the problem two sum two, which we've solved on this channel. I recommend checking it out if you're not familiar with it, but it's basically that uh, when you have a sorted input array, like this one and you're looking for some target let's say in this case the target is equal to three let's scribble this stuff out because we don't need it anymore but we're looking for target of three this is our sub array our left pointer would be over here our right pointer would be over here we're going to look at what does this currently sum up to one plus three is four so we want a smaller sum right since we want a smaller sum and we know that this input is sorted that means we should probably decrement our right pointer because if we increment the left pointer, we're going to get a larger value, which is going to lead to a larger sum, but we want a smaller sum. So we're going to decrement our right pointer uh, and then we'll end up getting a smaller sum. So in this case, we have one plus two, which is the target value. So I'm not going super in depth here because this is actually its own leak code problem, which is two sum two. But that's pretty much the idea we're going to use. So, you know, if we were doing this with four loops, we would have one for loop to get the first value. And then we'd have another inner for loop to get the second value. And then we'd have a while loop, a third while loop uh, with our left and right pointers while our left pointer is less than the right pointer. And then we'd basically do that whole two pointer technique that I just showed a second ago. So in total, we, uh, and by the way, this while loop is gonna be determining two values for us, the left and right values. So in total, we have three loops 
So the, the time complexity for this solution is going to be n cubed. Even though we sorted the input, that's really not the bottleneck. The bottleneck is the fact that we have literally three loops over here. So this is a perfectly valid solution. It's just one extra loop compared to the three sum problem. But what this problem is really getting at, and I wish they actually explicitly stated this rather than just calling this four sum, it's about, you know, a generic solution. Because in this case, they gave us four sum, but they could have given us five sum. We're looking for five values or what if we were looking for six values or seven or even a variable amount like k then we would need to you know keep making loops for however many k values that they gave us right that would be pretty hard to code up can we create a generic solution to solve this problem and yes we can it's pretty much the exact same idea as like the for loop stuff except we're, we're going to be keeping track of a variable in this case the k is going to be four right because we're looking for four values and instead of just creating for loops like this we're going to use recursion which is basically going to be simulating those four for loops, right? So basically, let's say k is equal to four. Well, we're going to call our recursive function, find, you know, the first value, right? We're going to find a, and then we're going to call our recursive function uh, and basically pass in k equals three now. Then we're going to find our second value, which is b. Then we're going to uh, call our recursive function again, which is going to pass in. Now we're looking for only two more values. Once we get to two values, that's pretty much our base case. That's pretty much that while loop I was talking about while left is less than and right, uh, which is the two pointer technique. And then, you know, we're going to find all the solutions that exist with whatever subarray that we're given. So that's pretty much the idea. But obviously, as you can see, this could have, uh, this solution will work on not just a uh, for sum, but any pretty much variable amount of sums that we're looking for. So that's the idea. Time complexity, even with the recursion, is still going to be n cubed. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. And like I said, first uh, thing, the important thing to eliminate duplicates we want to do is to uh, sort the input. And then what we're going to do is declare a couple variables that we're going to use in our recursive solution. So one is the result, which is initially going to be an empty list. It's going to basically contain all the quadruplets that we're looking for. And quad is basically short for quadruplet. It's going to maintain what the current quadruplet that we're building is. That's really just a, a variable that's going to be used within our uh, recursive function, which I guess just to be lazy, I'm going to call helper. But, you know, maybe you could call it ksum or something like that. Actually, in fact, let's let's do that. Let's call it k sum just to be descriptive. So the first variable that we're going to pass in is k, however many values we're allowed to use. Initially, that's going to be four, but then it's going to be decremented to three and to two, etc. We're also going to pass in the starting index that we're looking at of the uh, input array nums. And lastly, we're going to pass in the target value. Now, I'm not passing in nums because it's, you know, just uh, it's going to be accessible uh, within this function anyway. But the reason I'm passing in target, which is also accessible, is because target is actually going to be changing, right? As we pick one value, right? Like so far we have our target, but let's suppose we picked our A value, then we'd subtract A from the target and then we'd have our new target. And then, you know, we'd also subtract B to find our new target, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So with the recursion, we always uh, try to start with our base case. And the base case is pretty much if K was equal to two, but I'm actually going to rephrase that and say, Say if k was not equal to two, I wrote it the the other way originally, but it turns out to be a lot of like nested loops. So in here, I'm basically going to have our non-base case, which is pretty much going to be us starting uh, our our pointer. Right, i is our pointer, and we're going to go from the starting index to the end of the input array. We could do until the end of the input array, but just to be a little bit slightly more efficient, we could subtract from this basically k plus one. The plus one is basically because this is non-inclusive in Python, just the way that loops work. But basically what this is doing is saying, okay, let's say k was equal to four. Okay, well, well we're gonna start at index probably zero and then keep iterating throughout the entire input array, except for the last k values k plus one values, right? So in this case, the last three values we're not going to touch. The reason is we want there to be at least three values for the other positions. Uh, because right now, if k is four, we're picking the first value. We want at least three values to come after it so that those can be picked and we can actually form a quadruplet. Okay, so what we would do then is call our helper, right? This nums of i is a candidate 
Uh, we're going to call our helper. We're going to decrement k from it. We found one value. So now we're looking for k minus one values. The next starting index should be i plus one that the next value starts at. And the target should be target minus nums of i. So that's very simple. Uh, before we call that helper, though, we should probably add or update our quadruplet. So append to the quadruplet nums of i. After we're done with that helper, though, we're going to clean up this call and basically uh, pop from our quad that last value that we just added. Now there's only one problem here. Suppose we had an array like this, right? So the first value we pick is gonna be one. Okay, then on the next iteration of the loop, we're gonna get to the second one, but we don't want to use that same exact value in the same position multiple times because we know that can lead to duplicates. So we don't wanna get those duplicates. So what we're gonna do is say, okay, if nums of i is equal to nums of i minus one, if it's equal to the previous value, then we're gonna continue. We're gonna skip this iteration of the loop. But what if we're looking at the first value, uh, you know, we're looking at the start value? Well, we wouldn't want to execute this then. So what we can say is if i is greater than start and this is the same as the previous value, then we're going to skip this. We pretty much did all of this. Oh, and by the way, uh, once that for loop exits, we want to return because we don't want to end up executing this portion of the code, which is going to be our real base case, which is literally just two sum two. So if, if k was equal to two, which is this case, then we're looking for two values that sum up to whatever target we were passed into this function. So we're going to initialize our left and right pointers left is going to be initialized to the start right is going to be the length of nums minus one basically the last index and we want to continue while left is less than right because if they were equal then they would be pointing at the same exact value the same index and we're not allowed to use two values from the same index uh, in a single quadruplet so there's really three cases here though with our two-pointer technique either our sum so far, which is nums of left plus nums of right, is less than the target, or it's greater than the target. So I can copy and paste that uh, and change the equality sign. So if it's greater than the target, that's a separate case. And the last is if it's exactly equal to the target. So first, if the current sum was less than the target, we would want to increase it. So to increase it, we can increment our left pointer because remember, even this subarray is going to be in sorted order. Uh, if it's the opposite case, that means our sum is too big. We want it to get smaller. So we decrement the right pointer. Lastly, we have found the exact sum that we're looking for. So we want to append to the result whatever quad happens to be plus these two values, nums of left and nums of right. Uh, there's multiple ways to do this depending on your language. In Python, we can actually just add two lists together. So this quad right now is going to have the first two values. We want to add to it uh, uh, two more values, which are nums of left and nums of right. So we're pretty much just adding two lists together here. So these are the four values which are going to form a single list and that list is being appended to the result list. Okay, but we're not done yet though because if we leave it like this, it's going to execute the same loop and it's just going to you know get caught in an infinite loop. We want to still update our left and right pointers. Now, it doesn't really matter which pointer we update in this case because we know both of them are going to be have to going to have to be updated because otherwise they would end up being a duplicate but we're just going to arbitrarily choose the left pointer to increment so what i'm going to do is increment the left pointer at least once uh, but if it happened to be that the left pointer didn't change basically nums of a left is still equal to nums of left minus one uh, then we want to keep incrementing it right because we don't want it to be the same value it originally was because that's going to uh, result in us appending duplicates. Uh, but there's one thing we don't also want left to go out of bounds. So before we check this, let's make sure that left is less than right. And by the way, if it did cross the right pointer, this loop would exit and then we'd go back up here and then this loop would also exit. Okay, so a lot of code and this is definitely really complicated if you haven't solved two sum two before or three sum. But if you have, this actually isn't as difficult as it might look. So that pretty much is the entire code. Let's actually call our recursive function though. 
So we can call k sum passing in four as the k value. The starting index is gonna be zero and the target is gonna be the original target we were passed into this function. After we call that, we know that our result list will be updated and then we can return that result. Okay, now let's run the code to make sure that it works. Whoops, it's just like me to have stupid mistakes here. So I forgot the colon, which is required after a function declaration. Okay, and once again, I don't know why I called this helper. That's what we were originally trying to call it, but let's change it back to k sum. Okay, now it finally works. As you can see on the left, it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.